Good evening. Welcome to On the Record here on SABC News. As you know, much of the national discussion over the last few days has come from the Zondo Commission of Inquiry into State Capture, and in particular, the testimony of Angelo Agrizi. Part of this is a debate about the role and reporting by the media on the Commission. When the Commission was first launched, Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo published in the Government Gazette a series of regulations, which seem to spell out when the documents before the Commission are able to be published. Then, over this last weekend, several newspapers published reports that were clearly based on those documents or based on accounts from people who had seen those documents. Those reports named names, including former President Jacob Zuma, now Environmental Affairs Minister Nvula Mukanyani, and Deputy National Prosecuting Authority Head Advocate Nom Gobo Jiba. Then, on Tuesday, Judge Zondo publicly reprimanded for the, me the media for that reporting. Let's listen to what he had to say whether the journalists and editors new and newspapers who did so believe that it was in the public interest that they publish what Mr. Agrizi was to testify about ahead of him giving evidence about it. I can see nothing that is in the public interest in the publication of what a witness is going to say a few days earlier. Deputy Chief Justice Raymond Zondo. I should also tell you that this week the organization Media Monitoring Africa, and I understand several others, are also challenging this regulation of the Commission in, in court. To discuss this tonight, we're joined by the South African National Editors Forum. The chair of their Medium Freedom Committee is Sam Mkukeli. Also with us this evening is Therese Tharka. She's a lawyer at the Helen Sussman Foundation who has experience of media law. Both of you, thank you so much indeed for coming in tonight on, on the record. Therese, I'd like to start with you. Judge Zondo is the Deputy Chief Justice. His comments, what he said, on the law, he's absolutely right. Yes, indeed he is. Um, so the Commission is obviously established in terms of the Commissions Act, um, which gives powers to the person establishing the com uh, Commission to enact regulations. So um, in regulations were enacted in accordance with the law, and it just so happens that these regulations do contain these, pro um, these provisions. Um, it is anticipated um, in the Commission's Act that the person in charge of the Commission can enact these rules in order to prevent any prejudice, um, uh, anticipation, or um, other things that may actually uh, inhibit the uh, Commission from functioning properly. So uh, Judge Zondo is well within his um, rights, and the rules are there in pap on paper. They've been there um, since the inception of the Commission. So. Um, Really, this has been, it, it has been known that this was the status quo. So, I mean, if there's a regulation, uh, if mm -hmm. there's a law in effect and someone breaks it, the natural expectation would be that a punishment would follow. Indeed, and it's uh, concerning that um, Judge Zondo did make these, um, uh, did issue a warning in November last year. Um, I think there was an issue where um, uh, Minister Godin's um, uh, affidavit was leaked in advance of his testimony, and it was um, a big problem. So the media has been warned, and so um, if he decides to take it further, something may, f may well follow. Simon Kukeli, why is the media allowed to break the law? Look, we're not breaking uh, the law out of uh, giving a middle finger uh, to the Zondo Commission or disregarding the laws uh, that are out there. If I can give you just a, a bit of history about these regulations. Before the Commission started, we went to the Zondo Commission. We expressed our concern about uh, the regulations because they made our life uh, very difficult. They were limiting uh, the freedom we have, and we draw that freedom from the Constitution in Section 16 uh, of the Constitution. We pointed out uh, the problems that we had, and the communications officer at the Zondo Commission agreed with Sanef uh, that there was a problem uh, with the regulations. And in good faith, we decided not to go to court, not to make a bigger noise about this commission, 
because it is so important. It would have it's seen SANEF going to court on the eve of uh, the Zondo Commission and blocking everything because we were making a fundamental issue about our media freedom. We had an agreement uh, that we were going to have uh, further meetings uh, to get the common ground about these things and so that they could fully understand our position and we could fully understand uh, theirs as well. Unfortunately, the Zondo Commission has not honored appointments uh, with SANEF. We've sought to understand this and they did not pitch at subsequent uh, meetings uh, about this. Ours is bigger than just the Zondo Commission. And we are concerned about a president where a judge or a presiding officer uh, in a matter can just decide that it is criminal for a journalist to publish a document uh, he gets a uh, hold of. Right now, uh, uh, Judge Zondo might enjoy a lot of public sympathy because uh, we're dealing uh, with uh, state capture and we're concerned uh, about uh, rebuilding our South Africa and uh, uh, public uh, institutions. What happens then when a magistrate in King Williamstown uh, decides that it is criminal for a journalist to get hold of a statement that is going through the court system that may, uh, due to some corruption or another event, not see at the light of day? The Zondo Commission is an institution, institution that we need to watch very carefully as the public. We are not stenographers. We are not going to just record what's going on. We need to watch uh, what happens with statements, when they get filed, who manages what. It is the duty of the Zondo Commission to make sure and protect the integrity of the processes uh, before the statements are learned in public. This is a highly charged political environment. People play games. People leak information intentionally ahead of time to achieve whatever interests uh, and uh, objectives uh, they may uh, want. So it would be extremely unfair to blame the journalists and now threaten that there could be action that include possibly the criminalization of publication of information in South Africa. We have a, uh, opposed draft legislation uh, from the government that makes journalism uh, critical. What we do not want is a presiding officer deciding as he feels that this is right now a criminal and setting a precedent that would be very, very problematic for the craft of journalism, but most importantly, for our democracy. Okay, so, so you say that, that you had started a negotiation with them that had come to naught, it had come to nothing. I mean, Therese, would a judge buy that in court? Sorry, sir, we broke the law, we thought that he might change it? No, a negotiation is just that, it's a negotiation. And um, it's great to negotiate in good faith and bring concerns um, to the fore when they arise. Um, but there was actually no um, resolution to that, there was no change to the law. And so the law stands. Um, there was actually, um, civil society did have concerns about another regulation in the regulations, Regulation 8.2, which concerned how the evidence can be used. And that was um, addressed and that regulation was changed in a formal process. But until that formal pr process actually happens, the law stands and you have to abide by it. And um, what Sam is saying about procedure, I think, is very important. There is a procedure, it's laid out in the regulations, and it has to be followed. You can't pick and choose when you want to abide by the law, unfortunately. Okay, I mean, that's great, but in the real world, I mean, we have people who are probably going through the courts now for being caught smoking dacha in their own homes, mm -hmm. even because they were caught before the constitutional court ruling, which legitimized it, and they could be prosecuted for that. I mean, it's the old phrase, the law is an ass. I mean, mm -hmm. does it not come back to this, that the law has to also be realistic? Um, the, yes, well, the law has to be realistic, but unfortunately, the, uh, uh, legal certainty is something that's very important, and law exists to regulate behavior, so um, you have to take it on its face there. Um, and I think here, when you, you're not just dealing with something where it's an individual in, an, in a um, very discreet circumstance. This is a commission of inquiry that could determine the fate of this nation. Um, so it's, there's huge public importance here and very, a lot of importance given to the actual smooth and efficient and proper running of this commission. And so anything that jeopardizes that, um, you have to take very seriously. All right, Sam, um, I, I sort of fully expected the words public interest to have come <laughs> and Naturally, from. I mean, it plays into <laughs> everything that okay, you... Let, let, let me ask my question. I mean, I get that. But why is it in the public interest to report on documents when, in this case, in the Agrizi case, we knew that he was going to, by the end of the week, have put all of those documents into the public domain? Look, are we not arguing a very a specific uh, issue about a, a particular uh, story? Uh, that is uh, in the public interest that was carried this weekend or not. Uh, ours is a matter of uh, principle. Uh, it's about the criminalization uh, of uh, journalism. Is, uh, that is something we are definitely 
uh, opposed uh, to and we are worried about uh, that principle uh, and uh, the, the precedent uh, that uh, may come out, uh, out, out, out of the whole thing. The Zonda Commission is a layer, it's part of the, one of the layers of uh, one of the chapters uh, in the institutions that are there uh, in the public and, and about uh, reviving uh, the dream of a democratic and a truly democratic uh, South Africa. We have to watch it very, very, very carefully. We have heard allegations uh, of an officer of the uh, commission uh, that may uh, have to answer serious uh, questions uh, of impropriety. Uh, there have been uh, questions uh, potentially of a service provider that was uh, not vetted. So the public glare is, is got to be there. We have to, to watch uh, what is uh, going on beyond just uh, somebody getting a story about a statement that uh, reaches uh, the commission or that uh, doesn't. We're making a very broad and, and a bigger issue beyond uh, a particular story. If Judge Zondo uh, has a, a grievance about a particular story that uh, taints uh, the process, we'll certainly uh, respect uh, that view, but ours is much uh, broader about it. It's an issue of uh, constitutionalism. We're not going to have uh, somebody, because they are a presiding officer, uh, making a sweeping uh, regulations uh, that are flout a cornerstone uh, of our democracy. We get our authority uh, from the constitution of uh, South Africa and we are concerned about uh, protecting that beyond uh, this one event about uh, reviving South Africa. All right, I do want to investigate and interrogate this idea of public interest a bit mm. because that is what the media always says, I know I'm part mm -hmm. of it. Um, but so, 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 so if for example a, a journalist would make this case, Angelo Agrizi has huge security around him at the moment because everyone knows that, that his life is in danger. That's mm -hmm. the view of the commission. I've got these documents. There's actually a significant risk that he will not be able to give this evidence because there might be holes in that security. Or however, it's, his life is in danger. Mm -hmm. Could a journalist not go to a court and say, Judge, I'm sorry that I published it, but I felt I actually had no choice because this information is so important, implicates a former president, implicates a, form, a current cabinet minister, a current deputy head of the NPA, that actually, I know you wanted to wait, but I was actually very worried for this man's safety. I mean, would a, ju would a judge accept that argument? I, I doubt it because... Um, Surely it's in the public interest. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, as it stands, the evidence is on affidavit, so it is sworn, so it has some level of... Um, it, it, it has evidentiary value as an affidavit and that affidavit is in the possession of the commission so here it's purely a matter of timing um, if something were to happen to him the commission still got it they can mm. still um, uh, make that evidence known publicly mm, dead man's evidence doesn't have that much weight in there's another angle to this <laughs> there's another angle. i'll let you interrupt go for it <laughs> <laughs> thank you Stephen. Stephen, the zondo commission yeah. and the stories are being uh, written mm. about the one of the narratives is that there is a strong fight back uh, by the people mm. who are accused uh, of uh, state capture and they are deliberately uh, leaking information to discredit the Zondo Commission. So if you're saying journalists mustn't cover these and the mm. stories are not going to be interpreted, that narrative doesn't enjoy uh, enough uh, coverage and the public doesn't mm. get uh, to discuss uh, these issues. It is very important that the events around the Zondo Commission be interrogated. The question or the conversation we should be having is the quality of the journalism being done around uh, these matters? Who leaks what? For mm. what? What are the questions are, are being asked? Mm. Instead of saying it is criminal to get hold uh, of a statement that will or will not uh, be read out at Zondo, but you should be asking it, what, uh, uh, what is the objective mm. uh, behind a particular story? And what is the benefit uh, the public draws uh, from that? How do we strengthen uh, a democracy? Politically, that's quite an important uh, mm. part of, and the, our journalism and the media sector generally, is something that we need to, uh, to, to, uh, to look at very carefully and help South Africans understand exactly the issues. I understand where Judge uh, Zondo uh, comes from uh, in his uh, rebuke of the, of, the, of the media completely. He has to be seen to be talking tough because some people will say, because there have been these leaks, they are no longer comfortable going to, to the Zondo Commission. Yet they potentially leaked the information uh, themselves to distort or to influence uh, the processes. So it, we must encourage journalism. We must encourage journalists to push to, their pub to the public's attention issues, and they must do that responsibly. Some passionate arguments already coming through. Sam Kukeli, Therese Thaka, they're both with us for another few minutes. When we come back with On the Record, we'll also look at what happened in the, in the Zondo Commission today around journalists and claims made about money and people in the media. Stay with us.